मॉडरेटर निश्चय सूरी पार्टनर एंड हेड के पी एम जी अकेडमी के पी एम जी वी वेलकम यू टू दिस स्टेज सर होपफुली द डिस्कशन विल बी सिंपलर दैन द टॉपिक लेट मी बिगिन विद and we'll do this in in threes you know i'm a big fan of the number 3 so hopefully we'll finish something three as well uh three golden words for me that define the session relevance application and impact um three definitions of what what we're really going to talk about education and let me give you those three definitions because i think it's important for you to understand um the root um and the essence of the word itself the process of receiving or giving systematic instruction especially at a school or university that's the first the theory and practice of teaching that's the second and a body of knowledge acquired that's the third and you'd see that in in every way each of these definitions have actually assumed um more meaning and a different meaning in the context that we are that, that we are living today uh three multiple versions of the truth let me give those to you as well and uh, these are in fact why i call them multiple versions of the truth is because they come from different sources and therefore can be questioned because one research often doesn't necessarily support another and these are from have you heard of the global talent competitive index so that's uh a research report that was carried out by adeco tata communications and insiad and in fact um what what this research showed us was in fact that we weren't very well placed in terms of our ranking on global competitive uh, global competitiveness in our standing the second in fact was uh, from a research report on uh, undp and you do know that the quality of education is one of the strategic drivers selected in terms of a goal by the UNDP and there too we were uh, really short in terms of our standing and the third in fact is a report by the all india survey of higher education that's the only real government source um, available to us in terms of a uh, number of graduates for example that um, pass out every year anyone wants to take a guess 36 ah somebody has read the report 36.6 million is the number that actually graduates from uh, all the colleges in higher in higher education um finally i'd like to end uh, at least in th- in 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 keeping with the threes that we'll have our conversation also in three parts the first uh, we will try and address the challenge of employability itself and get vinny's views on employability the second the initiatives that andhra pradesh government has taken in helping um drive um uh, greater interaction greater participation bringing together uh, through building a bridge between industry academia government and the institutes how is that evolving and finally uh, get to some key lessons and how do we actually broaden and uh, the agenda in terms of participation of other states and what are some key lessons that we've learned so let me begin with uh, posing my first question to you vinny how do you see the employability challenge for our country today thanks for setting the context first of all and very good afternoon to all of, all of you so the context of the employability yes it's been really talked about for last almost uh, 10 years you know so having said that uh, large corporations have created jobs like infosys and tcs and plenty of them uh, during y2k but the chairman of the infosys comes out and says that but none of the engineers are employable in the country right so i think the challenge now uh, today i think it's 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 pretty much the employability part of it but i think you have to go a little deeper and understand the root cause of it right so y2k was a different context of creating a lot more labor it professionals and today i think that we've uh, moved into a very different context of technology right today so i don't but the colleges haven't really caught up with that the students haven't really caught up with that or or the change makers in the colleges haven't really caught up with that 
So in Y2K, if uh, Narayan Muthigaru was talking about the employability was the issue of a life skills. Today, it much more. It is. It is much more than that, right? It was about a life skills and soft skills. What what was properly indicated by some of the large corporations, and today I think it is larger than that. It's also about how these kids. I mean, how these kids in the colleges are pretty much understanding the relevance of what's happening in the global economy with the new companies and coming up and creating a lot more jobs. And we all know that how touch as revolution created a lot of uh, new companies and a lot of new opportunities globally. And then we've last 10 years, we know that the number of jobs that have been created in these new companies are 10 times more than almost uh, any of the large corporations, if you look at it, right? Uh, 30 plus years of uh, large corporations, if you look at the data, and then uh, you look at the companies that have created in the last 10 years, whether it's Amazon's, the Flipkart's, or the Facebook's, or the Ola's and Uber's, uh, all of it, you know, and technology and our technology space also. Right, a lot of it. So with that, with that, with that context, if you see, I think as a as a country, yes, uh, we talk about there are no jobs, and I think we talk about we should be able to skill these people, right? The skilling is one part of it to address the employability part, but I think it's a lot more than that is what we feel, right? And to your question, yes, uh, to comment about the employability, it is pretty much out there. There's no doubt doubt about it. Well, it is only added. To the what uh, otherwise large corporations with the corporations which created IT jobs were talking about ten years back. Today, so I think it is much I mean, more than that. Fundamentally, if you look at uh, employability, it's really about demand and supply. Now, what I hear you say is there are jobs, and a lot of jobs are being created, especially with the new age uh, companies. As far as supply is concerned, and we have thirty-six point six million graduates come out every year. Um, what's that number for Andhra Pradesh? That will be about, uh, if you look at, we as Andhra Pradesh, not pretty much, so we look about less than a million. Less than a million. Now, if it's not a demand supply issue, there could only be two aspects that really fundamentally impact employability. One is labor market efficiency, which means while there is demand and supply, there isn't a platform or medium available that brings the two together in a meaningful way. That could be one issue. The second is that the quality of supply itself yes. is not of the quality and standard uh, which is uh, which can be absorbed now they, you know there again why why i say that there are multiple versions of the truth because nobody can agree with what is the employability percentage of students that actually graduate every year and you know you have there are a number of reports uh, you and me were chatting earlier and you said that figure is close to 20 percent less than that less than that so if it's Very less than 20 percent and a million graduates clearly that you know leaves a large number of students which are actually not employable um, if you break that down and you know we were getting to one is skill can you throw some light on what are the other missing as aspects of of being employable right i think uh, when you started off saying that you there are jobs right and then we talk about 36.6 million graduates coming out of the country i'm not the higher education students uh, on the other side, if you look at, like I said, in the last 10 years, the jobs that have been created by large, smaller companies and startups. Right. If you ask any startup, what is their biggest challenge? Ask anybody today, who, why they're not able to go to the next level. And you ask, what is the most secret, so se secret behind Flipkart, for example, one of the India's most successful story, or Paytm. The difference is that you see most startups say that uh, they're not able to find talent. You know what Flipkart did? I'll tell you a very interesting story. This was guy. Uh, one of the first employees of Flipkart. He used to recruit people, put all of them in his room like this. He used to take a class, a full day, induction. The induction was all about how do you want your boss to be? How do you want your CEO to be? So four hours, there's a brainstorming. All these guys write down a piece of paper how their boss want to be. They break for lunch, and then after they come back, then this guy asks, OK, now you've jotted down how your boss want to be. Now the next three hours, start mapping and start jotting down how your boss, how you want your boss to be, if Flipkart has to be the number one e-commerce company in the country or in the globe, then they relook at it and reshuffle and remap. The session ends with an half an hour, this thing, all of you have to be the bosses. All of you have to be that. Then only Flipkart grows. Right? So fundamentally, if you look at it, it's not about the skill. It's not about the skill, look at it. It's, I think it's the aspiration. I think fundamentally, we've addressed the problem of the employability in, a con in, 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 in our country, at least the wrong way. We were not able to hit the bullseye. 
if you create an aspiration, if you actually create the desire, and this guy will find the way to get, get himself skilled. This is what we see in, in, a, in, in country today. Some of it is societal makeup. It is. Uh, clearly. And some of it has to do with perhaps the quality of edu you know, K-12 education as well. Because clearly in early years you start you know, building a greater self-awareness of who I am and what my calling is. And, and the faculty in, in higher education doesn't also help the cause. Because ideally they should then promote that self-awareness and create an understanding of jobs and, and industry and, and career avenues. And career counseling can be a you know, big enabler there. Um, if we, you know, l let's move our conversation to part two, because clearly we do know there's an employability challenge. We do know that our talent isn't necessarily well-placed in terms of competitiveness. Employability isn't limited only to skills, even by the definition. So it talks about attributes. World Economic Forum actually has placed far more importance on EI and EQ compared to domain and functional skills. Um, you know, if, if our curriculum isn't relevant, isn't changing, incorporating those aspects, clearly then again, you know, it's a piecemeal approach. So you might skill them on AI and IoT and, and robotics, but clearly if they don't have the life skills, as you call them, uh, they're again not employable from that standpoint. Um, Let's move to part two. You've taken a number of initiatives in, in the Andhra Pradesh government, and specifically in the field of IT, given that's a high IT hub as well, the South in many ways. Tell us a little bit about you know, the objectives of the IT Academy and then some of the initiatives that you've taken. Yeah. I think just to give you the objective of the IPT, uh, AP IT Academy that we've set in Andhra Pradesh, it's also important for me to sort of give you the background why it is to set sure. up, right? So, You've touched upon a very interesting point about the curriculum and also the, the education that these people go through are relevant or not. For some reasons, I think we've, pack, we've packaged in India in a, the education in a very wrong sense, right? We've converted in the last 20 years, thanks to post-liberalization especially, we've, we've converted all the institutions into our placement agencies, right? Right from IAMs and all the top schools, everybody. I think people, you know, observe, they've given a perception and uh, very clear uh, indication, oh, you go through this uh, four years of engineering or you go through to two years of MBA, you're going to get a job at the end of the thing, right? So they think, okay, what I'm going to study is going to get me a job, which is not the right thing. So in this context, what happened is that the value proposition is probably went in a really wrong, wrong context. So we need to ensure the expectations set for the people to be met. If the curriculum is not doing it, how do we tackle the expectations of the people that they are going to get a job at the end of the engineering or at the end of their uh, you know the studies that is where apit academy was founded to ensure that we bridge that gap of the academy which is ne which is com not necessarily to do with you know getting a placement just after you complete your studies and how do we bridge that gap between that academia and the industry. Whatever happens between this, how do we bridge it? So APITA predominantly we've founded uh, to ensure that we bridge that gap with respect to students getting trained on the relevant technologies that are right now in demand. That is one. Two, obviously life skills. Three, how do we also ensure the industry come and participate in the academ academic institutions, right? So we all know that academic institutions in India are not pretty much focused on research, not pretty much focused on the emerging technologies and emerging areas of engineering. So this is where I think it is very important for an industry and also to come and participate so that actually there's a whole lot of relationship that builds in so that there's a sense of relevance that can be brought in upon the academic institutions in terms of the way they can develop themselves. So from the state of AP, from our perspective, is very important. So what is this one element that I can show to uh, the companies and attract companies to the state of Andhra Pradesh, right? If I have to build a state, a new state, obviously I need to build an economy, I need to build companies, a large corporation should come and set it up. Why do they come? Not just incentives is one part of it, right? We talk about plenty of incentives, but one part of it. At the end of the day, we all know that what's the secret juice of success for any co corporations or companies about teams, it's about people, 
right? If I'm able to make a great talent pool, if I'm able to showcase that, you know, I have a great academic institutions and I have good people here and this is a good talent pool, I think that's where I think it's going to be a time for us to, yeah, this is the place for you to be, right? So the objective of APITA in, the, in, the, in that context, in a larger vision, how do we work with the education institutions? How do we work with students? And how do we work with uh, industry so that we, in a collaborative manner, we're going to make the talent pool the most talent, most wanted talent pool? In that, there are plenty of initiatives that we take up. So some of the initiatives in a broadly I mentioned. What do, you do, what do we do for the students? What do we do for the industry? Be before we get there, can I be a slightly provocative with your permission? Um, one, of course, I, are we addressing the root problem? which is reforming the quality of education in the country. Because you've created a layer that actually now helps support something that is already broken, rather than fix what is broken. So uh, when we look at the quality of education, you know, access is a problem. Um, opportunity is a problem. Faculty is a problem. You know, there are certain fundamentals which are not in place. And in Andhra Pradesh, there are 1,500 colleges. 1500 out of which around 400 are listed with you so 1100 are still pretty much hanging without any support uh, I was in, on a panel recently and we were discussing um, the quality of education in India and one of the vice chancellor vice chancellors of an institute actually said that we've institutionalized mediocrity in the country and um, that's you know fundamentally a problem with us because you mentioned talent and you know there's some very interesting research um, and they called out that talent is in fact the most powerful source of driving competitiveness and boosting prosperity at the country level at a, and at an organizational level you're, you're talking about it in the in the context of a state right. um, how are, how are you because you this body is an autonomous body not for profit and doesn't work with MHRD or with your you know, uh, education council in the state, how are you actually helping repair ground level up rather than create a bridge that if were taken away shows the we inherent weaknesses in the system? Yeah, so uh, like I said, let's say on the ground level, uh, I think you're you're indicating at students, right? Stud well, in the quality of education the imparted by these colleges themselves. Right. So, like I said, you know, so the, our objective is more or more on the fixing and tinkering side, right? The body has been created to ensure that we go and actually tinker, at, tinker and fix and ensure that already what has the damage that has been done, how do we sort of do a little bit of a delay differentiation in, in terms of the before the product comes out. W so would you agree it's a, agree it's a band-aid approach, though? Sorry? Would you agree that this is a band-aid approach? It is, right? So It is. So you've said there are two ways of looking at how do we solve the problem, right? So <laughs> there's this problem today, and obviously we will address the root cause as well. So there's always a life cycle of the problem also. Uh, absolutely. Right? So I have to address the root cause, and I have to address the existing problem too, right? So existing problem to be addressed, there is always a certain life cycle that problem has gone through. So I just have to ensure that at least, okay, I, I do it I, I pack it, I package it in a way at least better than the worst, right? So the the root cause still to be, you got, have to go there and actually figure figure that out what's the problem and then uh, the root cause uh, for all these problems and obviously address that as well. So when you talk to an institute, right? Because you you have four hundred colleges listed, what do they what do they highlight as their top three challenges? What do they? Which is talk very about? interesting, no? I very 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 interesting question you asked. Most of the institutions that we encounter and ask if they, what are the challenges they face, first challenge they'll come up with is the placements. <laughs> right, yeah, that, first, the first challenge. That's the outcome challenge. Yeah. Outcome, that's what, they, that's what they're worried about. Yeah. That's one. Two, admissions. Then three, they talk about the quality of the faculty. Fourth comes the quality of the students. <laughs> In priority. So, this is true. And therefore, it's a continuing problem because the raw material, I mean, ultimately, it's the same raw material that's getting finished. Right. And if that comes through a pipe that is, I don't want to use the word damaged, but not of the right quality, clearly that also impacts the finished product. Correct. Which is the, the student right. uh, themselves. Right. Now, I do want to applaud the effort that the Andhra Pradesh government has taken because I think 
something needs to be done. You can't wait for a country to reform itself and then you do have to take uh, initiatives. Uh, talk to us about the Campus Connect program. Talk to us about the hackathons that you run. Yeah. Uh, those are some very in interesting initiatives that, that you've taken on. <coughs> Let me just go back to the conversation that I was, I mean, we were having that uh, a kid who didn't really want to, I mean, who didn't want to join, I mean, he didn't want I to join in forces, but had to join in forces because of his parents. I have now named out the organization also. I was just mentioning it as a large corporation, but you know, that was Infosys. <laughs> All right, so uh, we've realized, you know, we know that the problem is also with parents who are still very much decision makers at homes for their first career, at least first job. Parents do play a very important role in making a decision. We thought it is not only about, you know, going, going into the colleges and sensitizing the kids and sensitizing the uh, faculties and it's not enough. So how do we sort of reach to the larger audience? That's when we thought the power of media. So we've uh, approached the mainstream television channels uh, where we thought, okay, let's, let's do a program where we let's, in, let's invite uh, the kids on the other side, like, like a conversation like this, the kids on the other side, there's uh, all industry panels on, and industry people on the other side. Record this conversation, what's happening between the kid and the, uh, the industry panel, right? So there's this program that we started off with, College Connect, where the 300, 300 or 400 students sit on one side and they, co they interact. All of this is recorded by television. After this program is over, all these industry panels are open to adopt some of these guys as mentees so that they get, the students can become mentees, uh, uh, they, can, I mean, they can be mentored by these industry experts. The recorded one which is going to be broadcasted every week, Friday evening, 9 to 10 family time types. And obviously, the 300 kids were sitting. Most likely, all these 300 kids were sitting, their parents are going to watch this to begin with, for sure. Forget about other people, anyways, going to watch. So we've, we've seen actually a good outcome. We've now 14 episodes done. That is 14 weeks. Now we've seen a fantastic outcome of parents actually trying to understand, okay, there is this blockchain technology, okay, there is this company, there is that company, because we are bringing in people from very well-known companies which are three years and four years and five years old, doing well, created thousand plus jobs and things like that. And these guys are talking and suddenly parents are getting to know, oh, this is this company. You know what the parents are also trying to know? Oh, I'm using Paytm, no, my kid is getting a job in Paytm. Interesting. 